For I did not speak of my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. I know that His command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. That's from the Bible. His obedience and doing the will of the Father is what sustains, fulfills, and satisfies Jesus. Doing the will of the Father pleases Him. But what's happening in the world right now? What is the society doing? It is the exact opposite. Why? Parents nowadays are doing everything in their power and even to the extent of going beyond their means, rocking up credit card debts. For what? To please their children. Parents are the one pleasing their children, trying to bribe, to buy their respect and their obedience. You could see kids with cell phones, elementary kids with tablets. And they go to church playing their tablets, <laughs> playing their iPhones. But are, but are the parents getting their money's worth? You alone could answer that. Jesus learned obedience. Hebrews by day. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered and was made perfect, he became what? The source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. By the way, going back to that parents pleasing their children, I have a friend who I ride with in the bus every morning going to the city. I was trying to invite him, but today is his daughter's birthday, so they went to New York to, to eat there, to celebrate the, the daughter's birthday. He told me, we were talking about this, obedience. He told me that he was so frustrated with his kids, despite giving them everything, giving them tablet, giving them iPhone, giving them the luxuries in life without getting even respect from them. And you know what he said? From today, I give, I try to give you everything. You don't respect me from today. I will just give you whatever you need, not whatever you want. In working hard to please you, you don't even respect me. Isn't it sad that, that that's happening today in our society? Jesus learned obedience not because he sinned or because he was disobedient. What this means is that in Jesus, in Christ's humanity, he learned the impact of full obedience to the Father at the cross of his death and sacrifice. Also in Philippians 2 verse 8, and being found in appearance as a man, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. I was telling a friend one time, because he was having this difficulty with his relationship in the family, and he said, very hard. I, I cannot seem to please them, you know. I think I'm giving up. I cannot please them. It's quite what I'm doing for them. They don't appreciate what I'm doing. They don't. 
respect me or whatever. She was about to give up and I told him, you know, suppose uh, Jesus, you know, the Via Dolorosa, the way to the cross, suppose at the end of the Via Dolorosa, I gave him this uh, analogy, suppose Christ at the end of the Via Dolorosa, because of the hardship and the difficulties, Suppose he let go of the cross and said to the Father, Father, I give up. I cannot do this anymore. I give up. What's going to happen to us today? Jesus, in his humanity, learned the full impact. Of all obedience to the Father at the cross of his death and suffering. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient even unto the death on the cross. He learned obedience. Can you hear me? He learned obedience so that we have a high priest in Christ who can sympathize with our weaknesses and was tempted in every way as we are and yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15 He was tempted as we are but did not sin. What an example. Romans 5.19 Through Adam's disobedience Many were made sinners or unrighteous. Christ, through Christ's obedience, many were made righteous. Page 3. <laughs> <laughs> obedience in God comes first. And when we fail to do this, Nothing in our life will work. Have you noticed that? You disobey your parents? Are they happy? They're not. They're disappointed. They're frustrated. But they don't want to kick you out. They bear. They bear the, the consequence of your being disobedient. So what should we do? That's the question. What should we do? John 3.16, everyone knows this. We could recite this from the heart. For, by God, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the first thing you will do. Believe in the Lord Jesus. One must have... <coughs> First, a relationship with God to learn to obey. <coughs> you know what Satan is doing? What he, what Satan is successfully implanting in our minds and in the hearts of people today? <coughs> people, all of us, Satan is saying, all of us are God's children. And we should not be deceived by this because John chapter 1 verses 12 and 13 says, Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, God gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Not everyone is a children of God. Only those that believe in His name, in Christ's name. Acts 16, 31. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. The jailer was told by Paul to believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. 
And in verse 34 of Acts chapter 16, we read, the jailer was filled with joy. He gave a party. He was filled with joy. 